All right, guys, we're having some car fun today. So I bought this micro car from the 1950s and then we took the chassis out. We're gonna turn this into kind of a go-kart that we can drive around up at the lake. I'm gonna try to get this engine to run today. I'm gonna show it to you guys because it is one of the weirdest engines I've ever seen. All right, so here's the car. It's a 1951 Crosley and it's a micro car from back then. It's under four feet wide, so it's pretty much the width of a golf cart. So I was driving up to the lake and saw this car sitting out near the road with a for sale sign on it. The guy was trying to get money so that he could run his fireworks stand for the year. So he needed money to fill up the fireworks stand. I've never seen one of these in my life, so I bought it that day. Let me give you a quick tour of the car first. So Crosley badge, got a knight, kind of a crest design that they did. So that's pretty cool. Definitely gonna have to keep that. They put a propeller on the front and it spins in the wind as you're going down the road. I don't think Crosley ever made airplanes or anything related to airplanes, so I'm not sure why they picked a propeller. It's a two door. Somehow they decided it would be a four seat car, even though it's so tiny. All right, take you guys in here. Obviously the interior is out. This car pretty much would only go 40, 50 miles an hour max. And somehow someone did 28,360 miles in this little bitty thing. So you've got two front seats, you've got a bench rear seat, and then there's still room in the back for stuff. You've got your normal creature comforts back from 1951, so dome light. Got sun visors on each side. Got dual zone climate control. So here's the heater. If you want heat on each side, got a little flap. So your passenger can put their flap up or down if they want heat or not. For air conditioning, oh, get up in here. You've got a little kick vent on each side. So you're going along 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour max. Getting hot. Ooh. There you go. Kick your little flap out and you get some breeze. It had a radio. Someone stole that or it broke or something at some point, but the speaker's still in here, so it's it's behind there. It's got these itty bitty windshield wipers and you can turn each one on individually and they're vacuum operated, so you kind of pull this lever up and... I like this split windshield. It's pretty cool looking. It's hard to explain how small it is in here. Just pretend like a five-year-old designed a car that fits them and you've got some kind of idea. The windshield, it's barely taller than my hand. All right, so now let me tell you about the fun stuff, the drivetrain and chassis of this little car. Okay, we'll start at the front. Ball brass radiator made in 1948. That thing is still good to go. Manual steering box, of course. Got a little Zerk fitting there so you can grease it. It's a four cylinder, it's points. I did order from the Crosley guys, a new set of points. So I've got those put in already. Okay, the engine is a 44 cubic inch four cylinder. So that's 0 0.7 liters, tiny thing. There's no head, so no head gasket, right? So that's kind of neat, no head gasket to blow out. And it's one of the first engines that was ever mass produced as an overhead cam engine. Check it out, got bevel gears. So there's a shaft coming down, flat tap it, overhead cam. Mechanical fuel pump, hopefully that's good. Yeah, you can see it's driven off the cam shaft, of course. Single barrel carburetor, it's a Tillotson. It's got a choke, got a oil bath air filter. This is kind of like Cody's 1940 Oldsmobile. So mesh, fill it with oil. So the water pump is interesting. It's back here and it's driven off the back of the generator. So the belt turns the generator. There's kind of a little PTO shaft out of the back of the generator. And this is a rubber coupling. So this is just pieces of rubber hose clamped together. So if something breaks in the water pump and it locks up, it would just shear this rubber hose. We got four wheel drum brakes, solid front axle, kind of a truck leaf spring set up in the front. But the rear leaf springs, they're cut in half, it's called a hanging leaf design. And the back axle is bolted to the rear of this leaf spring. Just kind of flops around in the air there. All right, the transmission is a three speed. It's about the size of your hand, no synchros of course, and it's a dog leg transmission. So first gear is over to the left and down. Here's the biggest pain. It's a six volt positive ground. So this is a six volt battery. The positive terminal of the battery goes to the chassis. This battery is already shot. The problem with six volt is if this thing breaks down anywhere, nobody can jump you off with jumper cables. You can't use a normal battery charger. You gotta have a six volt battery charger. A lot of old tractors are like this. I'm over it. I think I'm gonna rip this out, switch to 12 volt. All right, for now I've just got 
a boat gas tank back here, some new fuel line run to the front. All right, first thing, get under here, drain the oil, see what it looks like out of this thing. All right. Let's see. Oh, what the f is that? Woo! Smells like pure gasoline. Okay. So the two ways I can think of that fuel fills up an engine block like that is if the fuel pump goes bad, the seals inside of it, as the engine is running, fuel can leak past the seals into the engine block where the arm is that actually makes the fuel pump work. And the other is if the fuel tank is sealed airtight as it heats up in the day, pressure can push fuel through the fuel lines, through the carburetor and possibly into the engine. Other than that, I don't know how. All right, so since we're going to 12 volt, we've got to swap this coil out. So I'm gonna yank it. I think I've got a spare one on one of the old houseboat engines that we can use. There we go. Niehoff, Chicago, Illinois, six volt. And we'll go ahead, pull the spark plugs just to check them out. Oh, these are like lawnmower spark plugs. They don't look too bad, a little sooty. We can clean those up, that's all right. Another thing we've got to do to convert to 12 volt, I'm gonna have to get a new condenser. So this is pretty much a little capacitor, but need to get one meant for a 12 volt system. That way we don't blow this little guy up. All right, condenser is off. Get rid of this six volt battery that is shot anyway. And then what we're gonna do is flip the polarity when we go to 12 volt. Instead of the positive going to the chassis, we'll actually run the negative to the chassis like a normal car. Okay. Get rid of this stupid thing. I wanna make sure I get all this RTV out of the valve cover because there's no oil filter on this engine. So just the smallest piece of RTV could clog an oil passage and ruin this little bitty engine, so. All right, made a quick trip to O'Reilly's. I think I've got what we need. So a 12 volt battery instead of this old six volt. Got a 12 volt starter solenoid. Got us a 12 volt condenser. And then they did have a couple of the spark plugs that fit this engine. So I got two, I'll clean up two of the old ones and we should be good to go. And some oil, of course, without gasoline in it. Okay, the very first thing I want to do is check the starter rotation after switching it to 12 volt normal negative ground because if the starter spins the wrong direction, That'll be an issue. Yeah, this looks like it'll fit pretty good. For now, I'll get the right lugs on here in a minute. And that guy doesn't fit. I'm just gonna clamp the negative to the post. All right. All right, so what we're really looking out for is normal automotive rotation. The flywheel goes counterclockwise if you're looking at the engine from the flywheel side. Woo, that thing flies, holy crap. Dang. Woo, yeah, okay, well that's the right direction. Holy crap. Yeah, so that's what they said would happen when you convert uh, six volt to 12 volt. Obviously you're getting twice the voltage, so the starter that is meant for only six volts it's gonna spin way faster and yeah, it does. Look at that, that bolt says Bendix USA on it. Where are you gonna find a USA bolt anymore? Okay, time to add oil to this little guy. No clue how much oil this thing takes. About to find out. Oh yeah. Okay, the old one of the old houseboat engines here. And this is a good 12 volt coil. I'm gonna steal it. It's not like the houseboat is gonna run anytime soon. It'll be okay. There we go. 12 volt, no external resistor required. So that's one thing about these. 
This should have about three and a half ohms of resistance, and that way you don't have to have a, a big ballast resistor in line with the ignition wire. There we go. All right, here's our new positive wire. So that's gonna go the positive side of this coil. And the negative side will, of course, go to the distributor. I'm gonna do some nice wire management here. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Get our new condenser installed. Coil, new condenser, new points. We're getting close, guys. Spark plugs, check. Okay, I just topped up the antifreeze. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the thermostat opens up. All right, we'll throw just a gallon or two in here because if the engine is totally trashed, I'm not wasting my lawnmower gas. And then for our ignition, you're gonna like this. I've got just a alligator clip. So just clip this on to your positive. There's your ignition. You like that? Also, because we've got a habit of burning things up, we've got a fire extinguisher ready to go. All right, we'll get the old helper fluid here. Okay, we are in neutral. Jeez, let me get my old safety glasses on here. You guys saw what just happened to Jay Leno, right? So we don't want to do anything like that. All right, choke down. Let's put our fancy new ignition on. Ooh, it's sparking. Okay. Oh. Fuel, fuel spraying out of the, the fuel pump. When things sit for a while, the seals shrink back up. And so this happens kind of frequently on these fuel pumps. So the seal will dry up. You go to run this thing, it starts leaking fuel out from the seal. And then the seal will swell back up because of the fuel and then it'll stop leaking. So if we wait a few minutes, that might be what happens. I'll also hit the screws on top, tighten them up. Okay, hook our custom sparky ignition back up there. A little spray of that, and jeez. I don't see it spraying. I think it's prime. Seems like it's running out of time. Well, it's not quite idle yet. I don't know if this is the idle circuit. I'll try adjusting that. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. This thing sounds good. Put the air filter back on for a minute. Wheel thing. <laughs> Look at this guy. Sounds good. Open this before we all choke and die. Ugh. Oh, sh oh, damn it. I just rammed the door into my dad's Impala up there. That's not what I meant to do. What an idiot. So I got the old FLIR and the thermostat open. So we've got that hose turning the white up to the radiator. So that all looks good. There's our coil there. It's warm, but it's not super hot.
Okay, it's that for just a second. Let's see how hard it is to restart. Hook our little sparky ignition back up. That's pretty good. Let's try it again. All right, she's a little smoky in here, boys, but it ran, so that's awesome. Give me a couple days, I gotta bleed the brakes. I'm gonna get a tachometer on this thing, get a few parts ordered. Next week, we're gonna drive this thing around, see how fast it can go. So, see y'all next time.